This is the main event. Go pro. Highlight. I hit the main event. You know, Drew, right. I, took a, I took a week no or one's so on. away. No one's and on. Then it's, a, it's a mess. No one's on yet. <laughs> Do it again. Start it up. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Here it is. You are listening to Kayak Adventure Series. Kayak Adventure Series. This is where you choose your own adventure. You want to be offshore, you want to be shallow, you want to go up the creek. You want to have a kayak. That is or a kayak that is simple. You get to choose your own adventure. Oh, looky there. That's a micro bag. I hope you brought the family. This is going to be wild. Hey, this adventure is going to be amazing. What is going on? All right, we're officially live this time. It is already April 10th. This is crazy. Yeah, dude, we're getting close to getting this so whole close. thing. I actually like it's starting to hit me like, oh God, we we did something here. And now we have to like show up and like <laughs> do some more. <laughs> we got a lot yeah. of people signed up already for Chili Palooza. It's like probably close to 40 unique individuals because you gotta think there's the individual division and there's also the uh team division, right? So we got close to 40 in actual unique individuals. So yeah. yeah, this is uh gonna be fun, guys. It's gonna be fun. It's only what we're not we're less than a month away, right? And the momentum is building because hey, kayak anglers, you know, if you have one or two or three, four or five people a month out, that's pretty darn good. So we got oh, 32, yeah. and those 32 are getting their free hundred dollar gift bag from the sponsors. So congrats to all you guys who are already signed up. And hey, it's crazy. Why would you not sign up early? Hundred dollar gift bag, right? Plus you can move that entry to another event if for some crazy reason you forgot about your sister's wedding or whatever, move yep. it to the next event or get a full refund up to two days, you know, before the event. So there's no reason not to just go ahead and get signed up. So, um, yeah. uh, let's see. So lines in, what else, how's, how's your, your, you took a week off. Like you said, we had a little bit of a cluster when you were gone. I think Jake did. Okay. But we learned a couple of little things, uh, on the controls here, but I mean, how was your, uh, how was your time off? You do any fishing? Um, no, yes. Well, I keep hitting the pond. So it's that thing where I, um, but as far as I get in the kayak out, yeah, I've, I've been going to the pond just to make sure that I still know how to cast, I guess. Um, <laughs> you gotta keep it fresh back, and sharp. I'm back now. Yeah. I'm looking back. forward to this Sholy Palooza. Yeah. It's going to be wild, man. I'm excited. The, um, you know, I've been pretty much just still riding the high from the Bassmaster Kayak Series Championship and still doing some interviews and podcasts about it and some stuff with it. So, you know, I still don't even know how to feel. I feel like numb. I don't even I seriously feel like I've been chasing something for so long. You know what I mean? That was the last thing I felt like it was be cool to have on a, a tournament resume. Angler of the Years is great. We all want those. I got a couple of those. And then a championship was like the last thing. Got some national wins, of course, had plenty of those. But, dude, I don't even know how to feel. I feel like this weight's been lifted. Like, I mean, I'm still ambitious and ready to go out there and hit the next event I'll be at, which will be Gunnersville for Bass Pastor. But, um, man, I it just still feels weird, this whole thing. But I'm excited about today's show um, because we're going to have a couple great guests on. Uh, Ryan Rice, RJM Fishtails, he was just at the KBFNC, so he can kind of give us an update on how that national championship went. Uh, I was following along. You know, I don't know if you followed along much or, or whatever, but I followed along yep. with it and it was excited to see the action. That was a grueling, grueling event. We'll talk to him about it a little bit. Um, and then we'll also have a sponsor spotlight. I think he'll probably join us for the whole show. But Mr. John Thomas from Yak Gadget will be on and they make a lot of cool stuff for the anglers. As many of you guys out there know, he's everywhere. He's at shows. He's nonstop in the industry. So really cool to see, uh, have him on. So, and have him as a sponsor of the KAS. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's get it. I got some news and notes before we bring those guys on a little housekeeping, little news and notes. You guys, if you're on Instagram, we probably won't see your comments. If you're on the, uh, you know, Facebook or YouTube, that's better. Feel free to add comments and also feel free to, um, isn't there like a, there's a, a phone number you could call. If you guys want to call in and talk about something, we have a phone number you can call. I believe, right, Billy? We do. All right. So you guys, I'll get the news and notes up. 
and you get that number up, get ready. So, all right, news and notes. All right, news and notes. We'll do that first. Oh, the last thing I didn't mention about Choli Palooza, guys, kids will win the kids' division. So we're talking 16 and under. Get a free um, – a free. hang on, actually, I forgot to go live on Instagram. Now I'm live. But kids 16 and under in that kids' division – they have a lower entry fee. Now they're still are entered into the whole Sholy Palooza. They're still on the individual division. That's just a lower entry fee. And then we recognize the top youth on stage. Don't forget the winner of that youth division will get a brand new Primo kayak from Crescent. So that's pretty awesome that even if we have, you know, whatever, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids, some youth is going to walk away with a free kayak. So get your youth involved. That's how, that's why you might say, well, that's a lot a big prize for who knows how many four five, six kids, right? Well, we're trying to, the youth is the future, right? Of our sport. So we are trying to make sure we get them out there and you dads get, get your, you know, sons and daughters out there. Moms too, of course, can't leave them out. They love to fish too, like mine did and does. But uh, so anyway, we will. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And you know yeah, what? The other thing, I'll, I'll just add Drew is that like the kayak adventure series, one of the biggest things that kind of differentiates it from some of these bigger trails, even some of the local trails is like this family atmosphere, getting people together. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can do sign up for. Um, there's going to be the, um, you know, the thing like Dustin Hoy and those guys are doing with the, um, yeah. the ACA and all that, but yeah, the, the family, the family part of it is you're not even kidding when you say, you know, the kids, mm -hmm. the youth, the youth is, is, is the future. So, um, that's amazing. Bring your, bring your kids. Yeah. Yeah. For you sure. Might yeah. You might want to kayak. You might actually also just make some friendships and memories that last a lifetime, uh, that, you know, at the festival, we got the kids zone, bouncy houses, games like that for kids at the whole kids zones. And then we also have an activity like a Jolie Palooza on Saturday. We're going to have a hike. So I know a lot of my family's going to be on the hike and I know some others. So, uh, bring the kids to the hike. It's not a hard hike. It's a fun hike right along the river. It's beautiful and scenic. So it's a lot of things to do for the kids and the and the family while the anglers are out there fishing. And then the rest of my news and notes is going to be. Um, so guys, I've got some big announcements soon. So I'm not going to, obviously that's kind of like lame. I'm saying some big announcements will come soon. I can't say them now. So what's the point of me even like bringing it up, but I'm just excited about it. That's why there's some big announcements coming soon. Uh, we're working really hard on the, uh, the AOI package. So we're going to announce that our trophies are being made. So we're going to show you guys those trophies as soon as they're made. So you can get excited about that. Um, and 2025 schedule. I know this is crazy guys, but 2025 schedule, like tours and apartments signed contracts is done except for one except for one stop that's still TBD, but we kind of have an idea, you know, a couple of locations we're working with. So 2025 is done. We're already working on 2026. We got one meeting already we've had for 2026 and it's looking like a cool, cool spot um, as well. Maybe familiar to some folks, but it's a cool, unique spot, especially given our different format and rules. So uh, it'll make it be a little different. So that's exciting. Um, and then you guys will get to know, learn that schedule very soon, like sooner than, you probably realize. Um, so that's exciting. And then I, I think we maybe have mentioned some of these sponsors, but I do want to mention them again. They're, they're kind of new sponsors that came on board. We're about done wrapping up any new sponsors, but go check out kayak loading solutions. They're really cool. New product kayak loading solutions. Actually, uh, Ryan did a video on them. Uh, we'll have them in, in here in a minute. They're going to be at the events showing off their kayak loader. That's pretty cool. How you can just touch with a, a button, right? And your kayak goes from the ground, basically all the way, you know, all the way up onto your truck onto the top and it just gets locked in there. So it's pretty cool as you get older, especially it's kind of a little, it's kind of nice to have something like that, but they'll be able to show it off at the event. So go check them out. Uh, big drip outdoors. You guys, uh, that's, that's a new product. They, they have something called the lodestone. It's a magnetic stone. And I actually, if you want to see it, I'll bring up a video here in a minute, but I did post a walkthrough video. Did you see it, Billy? I, I posted a walkthrough of my Crescent kayak Sholey and Torquedo setup with the innovative sportsman rock guard and all the accessories that I used for Bassmaster Championship. I had a whole like seven, eight minute video just walking through exactly, exactly how it's set up. And anyway, I had that big drip outdoors lodestone on there. And a lot of people were like, man, where'd you get that? So go to bigdripoutdoors.com. You can go check it out. Uh, far wide is the angler of the year. I think we did talk about that, but far wide, that app is pretty cool. And maybe during the show today, I'll even 
share a screen and get into why I use the far wide app and also Omnia. They have an app that's they both those apps work really well. They don't some of, there's a couple overlapping things, but they're very different in a lot of ways and wh why I use them. But I think on the show today, we might be able to pull a screen and share how I use those apps a little bit. Um, Yak Rods, I want to thank Yak Rods guys. I mean, these guys, they're going to give you a nice $50 off coupon just for registering. You'll get that at the uh, event. And also, I've been on, there's so many packages coming in for the, for the series, guys. You know, Z Man sent loads of their, I mean, I got a huge box of this stuff. This is the Micro Goats. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but, um, the micro goats yeah. here and that's going to be in their prize bag. That's going to really catch some of those uh, micro bag fish for sure. And then the last thing here, I think on my note is Torquedo is uh, officially now our uh, individual angler sponsorship. So they've always were kind of penciled in as that, but with that Yamaha transition, Yamaha bought Torquedo and it kind of like caused a, a lot of delays in their whole process. But Torquedo is the official sponsor of the individual angler division. So I don't know if we should call that solo angler or individual individuals, just hard to say, but I don't know. We're, we'll keep yeah. it individual for now. I don't know. But, um, Hey, last two things, discord, sign up for the discord guys. Maybe we'll post that someone. We can grab that discord link and post it here in the comments again. But, uh, our discord channel is, is a great place to meet people talk about the KAS and find lodging and, and shuttle partners and even teammate. You know, if you want to enter the two man team division presented by X two power, then that's a great place. So, um, and then the last thing you already touched on it was the ACA classes, the American canoe association classes that is happening. Um, I want to say I might even have, might've pulled up a graphic from last time from the last show down here at the bottom, but it's the ACA class. Yeah, here it is. We have, uh, we already have some people signed up. It maxes at, at 15 we really need to have this final number and who you are two weeks prior, just so we can put you down on the insurance. You know what I mean? So Jeff may end up getting insurance for 15. And then if you, which will allow you guys to probably sign up a little bit later, but we want you guys to sign up for this ASAP. It will change your life. It will change. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. It'll save your life. You'll catch more fish. This is the most no brainer thing. If I had to spend money on one thing, if I could tell anyone, it wouldn't be buy some fancy new bait spend $50 or a hundred dollars on some fancy new swim bait or glide bait or rod and reel. It would be take this class, take this class. It'll impact your fishing for the, your entire life. Like you won't even believe. So take this class. Um, and it's easy. Just PayPal the money to Jeff little and you're in. That's like, it can't be simpler. So easy. and we have a private Lake, dude, you see that private stock Lake that used to be a golf course. I mean, it's got giants in it and it's going to be really, really, really nice. So, and like I said, huge fish. So, Go sign up, guys. Email Jeff Little, uh, PayPal Jeff Little there. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we can bring in our guests unless you got anything else that you – Well, I think, think – um, yeah, the only other thing I wanted to add about because when we do the news and notes, obviously sponsored by Omnia, if you yeah. download the Omnia app, and I, I think we oh, yeah. mentioned it earlier because I did this. Um, I downloaded the app. I paid for the app. I think it's like forty nine ninety nine or something like that a year. Mm -hmm. They give you a forty nine ninety nine credit. To yeah. Omnia, and it go, and it it actually works. So, and I don't mean that's no slight at Omnia. I'm saying sometimes right. promotions don't always work the way you want them to. Um, I downloaded the app, um, and then I went into the store and I shopped, and it was it was free. Yeah. So yeah, I got some uh, more micro baits because that's what I've been spending my money on. So that's cool. Shout man. out to Omnia, um, great app, and it's basically free because we're gonna buy baits anyway. Exactly. Let me actually put our code up there. We have a KAS 15 or you can throw it up and I'll put our, if you want to get the app, all you got to do, I'll put it in the comments right here, right now. I will throw it in there. Just go to that app right there or that link right there. Sorry. But the app is, it's cool. If you're a lake angler, especially, which a lot of folks in the KAS are going to be fishing the lakes because we allow lakes, rivers, and creeks, man, to have the wind direction, the approximate water clarity, the approximate uh, water temperature, stuff like that is like and navionics on top of which navionics is probably 50 bucks or more just to buy that alone so you get that plus all the other stuff plus you get 50 dollars in omnia like credit right i mean like you're saying if that's right. still going on i don't know if that's still it's a for everything or not but that's uh pretty much a good deal right there so go check yeah. it out well mine was last yeah. week so i don't right, know if well, it's for everything but it's it's pretty recent in my experience pretty recent. yep well let's bring these yeah. guys in well um yeah yeah, I was bringing both in real quick. I guess I'll I'll add them here, and this is I guess our, and then the main event, and then also sponsor spotlight when we bring John. That's right. The main event. 
GoPro highlight. <laughs> All right, Ryan, we will introduce you and then bring John in so we can hit the sponsor spotlight. But hey, RJM Fishtails, Ryan Rice, you're you seem to be everywhere. You're really hustling, man, and I appreciate it. You're kind of making a name for yourself in the industry and, and everyone has to start somewhere. You know, I had to start somewhere, Billy, we all did. And I see the passion that you have for the sport and it, it's just why I wanted to bring you on, you know, cause you're just always willing to help nonstop. And those are the kind of people that quite frankly, we, we want to attract at the kayak adventure series. So, uh, and you've been on the show briefly before, I think maybe when we talked about the Tawanda event, but how you doing, man, you came off a big, uh, a big long trip out there to the KBF national championship and you know, how you feeling? Uh, I'll never do that again. It was definitely <laughs> it was definitely too many days in a row uh, doing the five days. Right. Uh, real quick, am I too echoey? Too much echo in this room? There's a little bit of echo, but it's not like horrible. But you know, I, could probably, I could I could probably move around, so it's not so bad. Yeah, it's, just hang just, just hang in there. Yeah, you're good. We can bring in John if you want to and introduce him because he's going to hang out with us all show. So let's do that. Bring in John. This is the sponsor spotlight, Mr. John Thomas from Yak Gadget. Hello, hey, John. Yeah, man. We'll bring up. We got it somewhere. We have the sponsor spotlight thing. I don't know where. Here we go. Here <laughs> it is. We just got to bring that up. Sponsored by, presented by Tourney X. Sponsor spotlight presented by Tourney X, the best scoring app. I love how simple it is. Thank you, Tourney X. But yes, John, what's going on? Yak Gadget is doing some great things in the industry. Kind of honestly, what I just said about Ryan. Right. I mean, you were kind of the, the the little guy and you're not, you know, like giant or anything. You're still just basically it's yourself and a few people. So but you've just been passionate about this for so long and you're like, I'm going to eventually, you know, win, you know, win everyone over and show them how much I care about the sport and the anglers and the products that you need. I feel like you feel a really cool little niche. You know what I mean? And, and, buy, and build all these niche products that a lot of us, you know, need solutions for. So. Uh, what do you think, man? Tell us about uh, what you got going on with Yak Gadget. Well, I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, you know, I, almost six years ago, you know, we started this company. And um, yeah, it's just been um, quite a ride, you know, in the <laughs> last six years. We went from having one product to now having over 135 products uh, that we sell. Um, I've developed them all. Um, I've had to... Um, you know, just spend all that time and all that money, you know, developing it and getting it to the place where it's at now. You know, it's a lot of equity that you put in. I think what you mentioned, too, about Ryan, you know, it's there's a lot of sweat equity that comes mm -hmm. into this. And if you love this, uh, if you're still here six years later, you really love this because, you you know, you put your heart and your soul into it. And and this is, you know, this is 24 seven for me. I I wake up and I go to bed thinking about this thing and, and thinking about how we can continue to make better products and and uh, have better experiences on the water. So it's something that um, I've been really proud to be a, not only a part of it as, as far as the industry, but also just mm -hmm. proud to, you know, build a company from scratch and and grow it to this point now where we're starting to add even more capabilities now. You know, we're now getting yeah. to that point now where we're expanding past some of the things that we've done in the past. So. It's uh, it's 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 really cool just to keep it going, and 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 we've got we do have a lot of stuff for twenty four that we've already introduced, and cool. and we've got some new stuff before the end of the year that we'll introduce as well. That's exciting, man! Some new new manufacturing capabilities. That's that's the next step to growth. That's cool, man. You know, yeah. um, I was gonna say so, Ryan, you and uh, John will both be at Sholey Palooza, correct? I think you guys are both gonna be at that one. Yes, sir. Yep, yeah. absolutely. So. Ryan, I mean, so John, you'll have a booth there and you'll be able to hang out with the anglers, talk to them. Yep. Uh, there's, there's our good buddy, James fought from uh, Midwest kayak company. He can bring some uh, yak gadget stuff to Ozarkana. Great. Cause I don't know if John is going to be at that one. So James, you might take over the yak gadget product for that event since John won't probably won't be at that one. Uh, you'll probably be at a couple, maybe John, is that right? Yeah. For sure. I may, I may gun for the Ozarkana to be honest. Uh, I was going to do Bowling Green, but I've now got new travel plans that is going to yeah. put me kind of out of the reach of that. But, um, but yeah, the yeah. show is definitely, and then I definitely want to do one or maybe even two more for sure. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, we'll, we'll see at some of those. And if not, like, as James just mentioned, we've got, you know, dealers for all of our sponsors who can bring, they're allowed to bring the product for you guys. Yeah. But we just appreciate you being a sponsor, man. You know, and this is a good conversation. Actually, it's a good little roundtable discussion it's funny how the in the world of 
manufacturing and, and, you know, any products, there's always going to be products that are similar out there. You know what I mean? Maybe they were even inspired by the other products. I mean, look, yeah. I, de I developed a high low seat on with Jackson. Remember the Kusa? And now you can't yeah. buy a kayak without a, a camp chair seat on it. Right. So there's always going to be that. And so I think it's interesting because we've got, you know, Yak Attack is a sponsor. We have Yak Gadget. We have a lot of overlapping sponsors, but there's only a small overlap. You know, you guys have some overlap with Yak Attack. You probably have maybe a, yeah. a couple of products or one or at least with Boondocks, a little overlap here, but we're stronger together. And this is, right. we're a family. We need to grow this thing together. So it's cool that mm -hmm. even though personally I am sponsored by Yak Attack on the tournament side of things, it is cool that the KS can bring in not just Yak Attack, but a Yak Gadget and a Boondocks and all the other brands. And yeah, there's some similar things, but it's like in the in the fishing world with baits, you know, you're going to have a dark sleeper and it comes out, it's a hit. And as long as there's not a patent or someone's breaking it, you know, other brands out there, I mean, I'm sponsored by Z-Man, they make the Gobius. And I think they they just saw what there is. They made, I feel like they made some improvements on it, you know. And and so it's just kind of cool to be able to like work with multiple brands and, and you guys that I couldn't always even work with before. And I feel like you kind of feel a little bit different niche than a yak attack in a lot of ways too because you got a lot of products that maybe don't appeal to a ton of people you know the masses but they're these niche products that you can kind of make real quick and pump them out there and it's honestly it's kind of like what what yak attack was when they first began they were now i think they've their business has grown and they have business decisions to make and they have families to support and a company so they got to make the best decisions for for them and they make killer products and orion uses them as well uh Yak Attack products and stuff. Uh, I don't know, Ryan, if you're associated with them or if you have other products like Yak Gadgets. But anyway, Don, what do you, anybody want to talk about that? It's just that whole thing. I think it's just that, something to good to bring up, you know, and talk about how sure. this is all just one big family. We're, we're stronger together, I think, and, and stronger working together and being friendly and communicating. Not because we've seen what happens with Major League Fishing and Bassmaster. They're not exactly on good terms and it's not good for the sport. And we want to keep it positive here. So, yeah, yeah you guys chime in. I'll go ahead and, and tee off uh, if, you, if you guys don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think what you touched on, Drew, is is very important um, to me. Um, when I first got into this uh, sport, um, I fell in love with it instantly. Um, you're sorry, and, you're still there. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, it's me. I'm new. <laughs> it's, it's all I'm good. Trying to get. <laughs> trying to get well, you full screen yeah no worries uh when i first got into the sport i fell in love with it instantly and i think where all of this came from where yak gadget came from was me being out on the water and i and i was using a lot of yak attack products you know uh, they've been around since 2009 they were the ogs right and yeah and i got into the sport probably around uh 2015 and and so for about about three years before I started Yak Gadget, you know, I was religiously using, you know, Yak Tap products and some Yak Gear products, things like that. And I think what I noticed right away for me was there was, I just found that there were a lot of opportunities, maybe some areas that haven't been addressed. And, and also I was asking the question of, man, why does this have to cost this much? Or why, why, you know, why isn't it like mm -hmm. this? Or, you know, just questions like that. And and that's what really kind of got me going down the road of, hey, maybe I might try to build some things and, and kind of see or draw some things. I've been I've been a graphic designer for over 30 years and, and I've been drawing on a computer ever since like the early 90s. So for me, it was one of those things where I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to try to create some of some things that I feel in some areas that haven't been quite addressed. And that's where all this kind of came from. I really started in motor mounts because there weren't there weren't really hardly any options when I when I first started doing this for motor mounts and companies, great companies like One Objective, um, mm -hmm. I know Kevin Dismuke. He was one of the OGs that was doing some of the motor mounts, uh, motoring on kayaks. You know, back in 2015, 16 wasn't nearly as prevalent as it is now. Now it's almost a requirement. Now it's almost. Mm -hmm. A motor and a kayak now is like peanut butter and jelly. But back then it wasn't, there weren't a lot of options. So that's where it kind of, I started. And then I went from there to anchoring because I felt like there there just simply weren't a lot of anchoring options unless you're going to buy like a micro power pole and some, you know, things like that. And so I was like, I think there's room 
And I felt like too the sub two hundred dollar price point wasn't really being addressed. If you were buying the right. a motor mount, it was like three hundred or more. If you were buying like you know a, a, an anchoring system, it was like five hundred or more. So I just felt like, man, if we could hit that sub two hundred dollar price point, I felt right. like there was a lot of opportunity there. And then that just took me down the road to storage products. And at that time, when I came out with our crate, there weren't mm -hmm. a ton of crate options. There was the older style black pack, but 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 right. I felt like mine was a little different because I had back surgery 15 years ago and I designed it with an angle and the ergonomic reach and things like yeah. that. So I felt like although I was making some products at the time that might have overlapped with some other people, I was definitely putting my own spin to it. Right. And, and doing it in a much different way. And then that just went into even more storage stuff like our behind the seat bag, underneath seat storage. Just um, kept going. Storage. <laughs> it just it just kind of it just it literally just went kind of like. A, like a grenade and a snowball had a baby where it just exploded and went in so many different directions. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. it seemed like for a while there, every other day I'm, I'm whipping out a new product. And then it went into, you know, the phone mounts and cup holders and track mounted mm -hmm. accessories. And that's where a little bit, you know, overlap with, with the act attack started to occur more. However, I think if you look at our product line and you look at theirs, I think we might have five or six products that directly overlap and the rest of it, I mean, yeah. we're we're about to stern. I think we're one of the few accessories companies in the industry, if not the only. I'm not. I don't know if I want to say the only one, but I think we may be where we're bow to stern, where you can buy cool. from bow to stern for your kayak from us. But but again, that doesn't take any way from the great you know innovation that mm -hmm. that that you know guys like you know like Luther Cyphers has has brought to this mm -hmm. industry. In fact, I listened to a podcast of of his back in December. And I was really inspired because his story has been very similar to mine, where yeah. I was listening to his experience for the first four years. He didn't pay himself and he was working night and day, you know, and he started out of his garage and then he, you know, quickly built it, you know, built it into a location. And now he's got this huge, you know, uh, warehouse uh, slash, you know, um, factory that he has, but and that he had. And 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 that's been my experience, you know, for the first four years, I really wasn't paying myself. I was constantly reinvesting what money we were making back into the business and, and growing because when I first started, I didn't, I didn't have 40 drills. I didn't have you know, all these machines that we have now, all that stuff. So, so it's been very, it, it's been really cool to, to hear that because it, you know, it let me know that, you know, I kind of, you know, you feel alone sometimes when you're doing things because you're in your own bubble and it's really cool to see that, Everyone in this industry has been has been has paid a price to be here, yeah. Um, yeah. a personal price on a personal level, and it's true. And if you do this and you and you and you're you're really committed to it, then you gotta love mm -hmm. it. And and you're not thinking about a payday. You're not thinking about you know. You're thinking about yeah. the long run. You know, it's like when I think about Yak Attack, you know, and a company like that, they they built a legacy. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like we're on our way of building our Yak Gadget legacy. Yeah, and I they opened the door. Yeah, I mean they they opened the door for companies like you to have a platform as the as they continue to help grow the sport. And well, actually, it's not much different, honestly, than what I've said on lots of podcasts about this trophy and hopefully what you know that whatever AY is whatever I can do to push our sport and what Christine Fisher just said on her latest um, yep. video about the bass boat. If you think about it, whatever she can do she may not win a bass or even make it to the elites hopefully she does We're, we'll be pulling for her but it, but that inspires some other young girl to go do that and maybe she make it to the elite series or maybe she wins and so that's kind of what i'm trying to do too like if i if somebody out there gets it's just create positivity if some other angler out there if you guys all are sponsored anglers and you think it's everyone's your competitor and you're fighting and they're your enemy and they're your competitor. You're looking at it the wrong way. Cause if, if Chad Hoover gets a deal with Nissan or Ford or whatever, it, I've said this before, it only opens the door up for Toyota and the other companies to say, well, mm. Hey, look at them getting into this kite fishing thing. We need to do that. You know what I mean? So then that, that just created opportunities for other anglers. And that's what Yak Attack has essentially did. They, they help create an industry around the kayak fishing and with the accessories and it, and it, there's enough out there where it created an opportunity for you. So it's, it's a compliment and it's something I think yeah. we stay positive, work together. Like you're, like you're talking about, I mean, you were one of the nicest guys in the industry, I've had lots of good times with you. It shows you're everywhere. You're working hard and we are kind of maybe trained, maybe like brainwash isn't the word, but like, it's yeah. just 
we're like we're a competitive society. So once you align with a brand, everyone else is automatically enemy and they're the evil and they're enemy. They're bad. We got to like, and that's not the way yeah. it's not the, the reality that the, if, if you go over to those yeah. companies, those people that work there are hardworking, good, funny, nice people, the same way that, that you're just a good dude too. And, and extremely and talented. So, right. Yeah. yeah talented. There's nothing. Yeah. But well, I mean, there's probably some jerks out there. Don't get me wrong. Well, no, no. And, and, but, and, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say I've been perfect yeah. about it. I, yeah. you, know, you when I first came into this industry, one thing I noticed about this industry is it's closed knit, mm -hmm. you know, in a way when you first got, at least when, when I first got in in 18, this, it might be a lot more open now, but it was, it felt closed knit, especially on the manufacturing side. And people like I was going around at ICAST and some of these other events meeting, trying to meet some of these people. And they were kind of like, Hey, who's this, who's this dude, you know? And I, and I'll be honest with you for the first yeah. couple of years, it, it was kind of like, I kind of felt like, Right. It was kind of combative yeah. in the sense that I kind of felt like, OK, it's me versus everybody. All right. I guess I got to have a lot of confidence in who I am and just yep. push this out there regardless and do my own thing regardless. And I and you kind of have to do that a yeah. little bit. Not everybody's going to be as welcoming as you would like. But I think now I totally understand. <clears throat> I understand yeah. that now I'm not nearly as offended about it as I once was. And I think, too, I'm, I'm a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I've, I've had my, <clears throat> yeah. I've had my imperfections in it as well. But I think what I've learned now is, is that you're absolutely right. The more supportive we are of each other. And, and the thing about it is everyone's got talent in this. I mean, if you look at all the innovations that's happened in the last five years alone, and you compare that to what's happened prior there's, yeah. I mean, the technology of the holes that you're seeing on the kayaks now, mm -hmm. all, of the, oh, yeah. all the development that's happening. I mean, I just got it. I just got the Crescent K craft in the shop yep. and I just turned that, I turned that boat over and looked at the hole and the showy as well. The technology that's happening now and the development of these products and, and the rapid prototyping that's happening. It's right. an exciting time to, to, to do this, to be into this, and and also to see all the things. Look, look at all what Yak Attack has as them as a company has put out, and right. you know, in the, in the last few months alone, and oh, then look at lot. what we put out, and you look at what we put out, you know, with our, you know, with our um, our cool um, front facing yeah. sonar mount, our yeah. our quad rail system. Now we have a side rail system. Yeah, we've been able to make a lot of product specific stuff as well. I think that's some of those niches you kind of mentioned earlier. We're the anglers win. Yeah, the, the anglers are winning basically with with all this. It's a good thing. The anglers are winning. I mean, what do you think, Ryan? I mean, uh, about this topic a little bit. You have any thoughts? I mean, yeah. I mean, I believe that it's always good bringing a new company into our community because it just helps everybody grow. I mean, because some of like you said, a lot of things are spinoffs. So Yak mm -hmm. Gadget, Yak Attack may have something similar. Then somebody says, "Well, I wonder if I tweaked it this a little bit." And did their version of it i don't think it hurts anybody i mean because people are going to buy the products they want to buy whether it's jack attack yak gadget etc you know there's gonna be little tweaks on every product that people are going to like a little bit better doesn't mean mm -hmm. that yak gadget and yak attack have bad products this guy may have something new coming out or girl you know whoever's making something so i believe the more we bring into this industry the better it is for us to keep growing. That's why I really started what I did, you know, really getting involved with, you know, RJM Fishtails, it's just to be part of the community, help grow. Because when I was just down here in Alabama, you know, there was a, a bass boater at the ramp and he gave a few people a hard time about it, you know, giving us a hard mm -hmm. time about, you know, uh, loading our, our kayaks on a trailer. And they're saying, well, how long is it going to take you guys to do that? And we all said, we're going to be faster than it is for you to unload and load your bass boat by a long shot. And he just, you know, kind of huffed away and, Etc. So we're just trying to, we all need to push the kayak community to everybody and let everybody understand we're just anglers. Yeah. We're just using a different vessel. That's yeah. It. yeah, that's true, man. I mean, there's always going to be, if a, if a product is popular and it sells well, I mean, this is the reality of business. And if you get into business, yeah. you got to understand that you're going to have somebody else is going to see that, realize that, and there's some profit to be made and, and essentially, you know, make a version of their own that you're going to tweak it, make it sure. imp improve on it. And that's just the reality. And I would rather it be someone, a good guy like you, John, than somebody overseas, which that happens too. And let's yeah. band together and continue <laughs> to push people in the U S here to, to buy from your yak attacks and yak gadgets 
instead of anyone who's just knocking it off verbatim and there isn't any tweaks and adjustments like, like you're doing uh, on the few things or whatever, uh, or, you know, so that's, that's, what we got to just stress to people. So let's keep, that's why that we always tell people, let's keep trying to spend dollars with those who are supporting the series like this and the KBFs and the, the Bassmasters and the Hobies and the all Americans and all the local clubs are, are around the country. The ones who are supporting us, let's support them. It'd be like, why would you go to your a random pizza place if your uncle owns one in town? You're going to go to your uncle's. Right. He, he cares about you. You know him. You guys care about us. You know us. So let's let's continue to do that, guys. And well, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's a great point, Drew. Because I also think too, on the on the flip side of that, I I want to buy products from people that actually do what I do. Like, yeah. and that, what I mean by that is, is like if I'm a kayak fisherman. Right. Then I want to buy a product from a guy who's also a kayak fish. I'm a kayak fisherman. I mm -hmm. I, I got into this. I got into this business and started this business because I love this sport. I yeah. love being on a kayak. I love catching a fish from a kayak. There's no better feeling for me than doing that. And 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 the same for same for some of my competitors as well. Mm -hmm. And competition is awesome for any industry because, like you said, and you you alluded to it, the consumers win. Yeah. Now price points are are better on a lot of these accessories than they once were. If you if you compare those prices, what you saw before pre COVID, even to now, even with some inflation, like we've worked hard to keep our prices down, even with the inflation. Like right. and I, we've worked to actually improve our margins on a lot of things that we create now because I've considered that to be extremely important. Not only am I going to continue to be in the sport and and do this. But also continue to be value conscientious and and and, right. and to be um, and to give you more bang for your buck, give you multiple functions. Like I may have a product that does three things instead of one thing, and then all of a sudden now you get it. Like our cup holder XD, yeah. You can put your pliers, you can put your tools, you can put your baits on it. You can use it as a bait caddy in addition to a cup holder. So I try to give you a lot more function, bang for your buck. So even if we raise the price on it by fifty cents or seventy five cents, you're still getting like three times the value. Because it does more than just one thing, so that's, I think that's the mentality that that I think has benefited us over these last six years, and our, we've seen our business grow because of it. And and, mm -hmm. and it, it, like you said too, with all the overseas and all the other stuff. At first, I worried about that too. It's like, man, somebody's going to see what I do, and they're just going to copy me or whatever. And now I've kind of realized, but yeah, but we're doing more than just making a product. Right. We're growing a brand. We're growing a. Mm -hmm. we're, to grow a relationship of trust if you want good products that you know is going to help you out there on the water you know that yeah guy just going to give that to you and that's a lot stronger to develop that bond especially with this this group of, sure. of users it matters it uh, does oh we're I, tighten it tighten it that's it and and i've seen that that's why i work the the fishing expos because mm -hmm. i don't the consumer shows are great we did icast last year that was fun but i I, it's not the same spirit. And mm -hmm. so now this year, I'm not, I don't plan on even having a booth at ICAST because quite frankly, I'd rather just go to more fishing expos mm -hmm. because we yeah. got Indianapolis and seeing you there and seeing Gene Jensen there, but also seeing all of our customers. And and we've got, we've got sales to support that it was worth us being at that show or being at Columbus or mm -hmm. being, at, or being right. in Cincinnati or being in Knoxville at the East Tennessee show, because I get to connect directly with the people that use our stuff and they tell me the good and the bad. And I write down the good and the bad and, and we make improvements on it right now. Our front facing sonar mount mm -hmm. I, this morning, I was drawing up some improvements to improve our handle or improve the connector for the transducer. So we're, we, we live and die on feedback, man. I mean, our feedback is lifeblood for our company. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I I'm always going to bring that passion to it. I'm always going to bring that energy to it. And I'm always going to focus on our consumers because they're the ones buying my product day in and day yeah, out. So it's like, exactly. exactly. I always say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll end this. I'll end this with this. I always say this, this is my motto. I'll keep making stuff as long as people keep buying it. So yeah, <laughs> they're the life's blood. If, if I'm Pretty not, simple. yeah, <laughs> exactly. And if I'm not listening to you guys, who am I listening to? Right. I, yeah. I, I, I can, I have an idea of what I think is a good idea. It doesn't matter if if the consumer base doesn't connect to it, use it, or buy it. So 
So mm -hmm. our whole thing is is continuing to um, innovate by listening, innovate by yeah. including and having an inclusive environment. I love it when our customers email me and and tell me their thoughts, and I and I try to always and I'm not always perfect about getting back to people right away because we we get snowed under pretty easily sometimes, yeah. but. I love it. The feedback is everything. And so I think that's been, I, if anything, if there's one thing that I can point to the growth of our business, I think it's just been our adaptiveness to that feedback and and, yeah. the, and how much we live off of it. And it matters. And and to be able to make products the way that we make them means that we can also adjust them and improve them quickly, quickly as quickly. well. Yeah, that's and true. I'm well, we look forward to it, man. We'll look forward to seeing you at Shirley Palooza and people could check out some of those products. 100%. Um, and then we'll transition to Billy. You want to find um, the viewer voicemail. And we're going to talk to Ryan about the KBFNC. Um, and but before we do, uh, I will just say one cool story that you reminded me of before we go to Ryan here about the NC and this voicemail. Back at one of the shows, it might have been a outdoor retailer trade show. When China, if someone from China, they, they, they'll go and they'll see and they'll snoop around the booths and look at everything and, and take pictures. And it's basically just copy verbatim. But Someone came up to it was Marty Hughes, uh, not Hughes, sorry, Marty uh, Cronin from from Jackson at the time, our VP of sales, and he told us this story. It was uh, an Asian woman. She she came up and she could barely speak English, and she was asking Marty about the products, and she just was like, "But explain to me what it does." Like they're making them, they were making them, they were copying them. Basically, she's like, "What is this for? What does it do?" Didn't even understand what they were making and selling and what it was for. And that's the difference. That's a disconnect. Like you're saying you are a kayak angler. You love this sport. You're in it. You do it. Yeah. And then and the, our sport's so tight knit, like you're saying, and just so we're so passionate about it. We don't want to buy from someone who has not even a clue what they're making or what it's for. I mean, if we can help it, you know, if you don't only have two or $300 and you got to buy the cheapest kayak you, you can find from Walmart, that's great. Just get you in the sport. Let's do it. But Otherwise, I think no one would, would choose that, you know, if they don't have to. So anyway, that was a funny story about about what they have going over there. And, and the well, and also, so. you know, and, 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 and I'll say this real quick is the thing that I've also learned, too, about overseas production, too, is that, yeah, they can they can make things and they can make things actually very well and they can mm -hmm. copy, but they're they don't understand connectivity to the right. market. And they also they also don't really innovate they don't bring a lot of new things no. to the table. and i think that's an advantage that americans and, and american-minded business people and and entrepreneurs are always going to have an advantage over yeah and, and that's oh, why yeah. i don't worry and that's why i kind of don't i used to worry about it all the time and now i don't worry about it at all because mm -hmm. i'm focused on, on what we're doing because you know they can they can make all the stuff they want to make, but if it's not done a certain way and it's not done with a certain understanding of the market yeah. and also has that brand connectivity that I've talked to you before, it only goes so far. Like, yeah, you yeah. can get a better deal on something on Amazon, but you know, at the end of the day, the innovation and the stuff, the thing products you really pay attention to are the ones usually coming from American led. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Innovation pretty much. That's true. Um, what do you want to do here, uh, Billy? You want to do the well, voicemail or talk to Ryan first about? Yeah, my uh, my connection was kind of acting up, so I wasn't sure. I didn't want to be a distraction to the live stream. We have a lot of people watching, so um, I can let me let me hit this and see if it'll play. And then also, before the end of this live stream, we want to put up that number and encourage you guys to call in if you want to be on the live stream or your voice on the live stream. Call in, leave a message. So I'm going to play Put one that we actually yeah. got. We did get one. Hey, it's Brady Stores. I'm new to kayak fishing. And yeah, I was right. I'm wondering <laughs> about lodging at some of these bigger national tournaments. Uh, what kind of price am I looking at to stay? Do I camp or do I get a house with somebody? Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. That's funny. Brady hey, was Brady Stores. He was joking hey, there a little bit. We want to hear it. We yeah. want to keep hearing it. I guess it plays <laughs> over if you don't stop it. So Brady, I saw him at the um, Bassmaster Expo, and he was he was saying, yeah, he was obviously joking with us about he's new to kayak fishing. But his question, he said he wanted to answer because it was something he had to get figured out for these <clears throat> national tournaments. And if you'll notice on the Kayak Adventure Series website, if you go to you know kayakadventureseries.com, I can just even share my screen and just show you what I'm talking about here. 
if you click on one of the events like Chili Palooza right here, you can just scroll down. We've got a lot of lodging options for you guys down here. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Yep. If you go to the event detail, the basic event information, just scroll down with that. And it there's we actually have a lot of lodging uh, here, the recommended lodging and camping. And even a new one just got added, the Riverbend Primitive Camp. It's like 25 bucks a day, 120 a week. You're right on the river. It's primitive, so you obviously have to be prepared for that. But all the other things right here, you got your Airbnbs, your 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 uh, hotels. Some people like hotels. Some people would rather have Airbnbs. You know, some people want a campground, cabins. Um, Flint River Outdoor Center usually has a lot of room. So click on every one of these events, guys, and you'll see the lodging there. We try to help you out the best we can. There's obviously other lodging options besides that way, our website, but that's a good question from Brady and, and mainly just join the discord and get to know this is all about a community, right? This kayak adventure series and kayak fishing as a whole, get to know other anglers. And next thing you know, Ryan, you're probably like, Hey guy, you talk to your friends. Like, Hey, who wants to team up and, and get a house together or a cabin or share hotels or whatever. And you just start to create these friendships and bonds. So that's a, that's my answer to that question. If anyone's got something to chime in on it, feel free. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you range, like you said, you range from $25 a night to possibly up to 150 a night, depending on what you, you know, how luxury you want. I mean, I just, for the national championship, I was there for a week and I paid a, like nine something for a house, for like a cabin, but, it was, you know, fully air conditioning, heat, bathroom, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. You know, I was by myself this time, but I mean, it was only, to me, that's pretty inexpensive. You know, it's a lot of money mm -hmm. for one individual, but I mean, for what yeah. it was, it was actually a good price. So, I mean, it was a whole week. Yeah, so I agree. Sign up and register, not register, book soon. I would say that's my advice. Russ Snyder's and I talked yeah. about that on the episode with, with how important that is. And it, dude, I mean, this right here is, is an example of that. We literally had a house five minutes from the ramp at the river. Now, I didn't know I was going to 100% fish the river. It was obviously like high on my list at that tournament, but I wanted to make sure I had a good house. It was close to Telequah, which was our event headquarters. It was comfortable house and it was the prettiest view on the entire lake i mean we were on a hill overlooking the entire lake it was beautiful so all the guys there can attest it was like so and that helps you just be comfortable that's less driving you have to do every day uh it's just it's better so book soon book for sholy palooza and also don't forget to register which we mentioned earlier for sholy palooza asap because you can't get that refund up to two days or move it to another event so you want to get that hundred dollar prize bag uh, by being the first hundred anglers and we're going to be getting there very quickly with the way signups are going so um all right. So Ryan, we were kind of trying, you know, you had an echo going on. We were trying to get some information about how things went at the KBFNC and also just how excited you are for some of these events. So, uh, and then while we're talking to Ryan, everyone out there watching, see Steve Baker just came in to chime in about how beautiful that house was. It was, but um, ask your question. We wanted to answer some of your questions in today's show too. So ask any questions you have and we will answer them uh, just like we answer Brady's uh, voicemail. So, all right, Ryan, what you got, man? What's the, how was the NC? It was it was grueling. I know you said you wouldn't do it again. I think you just mean like five straight days again. You probably want to go to yeah. the NC, NC again. They, Chad and KBF they put on a great event as always, and uh, it's you know still the second most amount of money I've ever won. You know this uh, twenty thousand for getting second. I think it was twenty three five by the time I had some extra bonus money and stuff like that. Uh, so I mean you will do that again, but maybe not all five days straight because you could, once you put in pre fishing on top of that. It is. I mean, unless you're just like 17 years old, I just can't do that much anymore. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. So, you know, I went down there with no pre-fishing because I just don't have enough PTO. But I, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been to Gunnersville two other times. So I had a, a few places I, you know, I kind of had in mind. And my first day, I just got that video out yesterday. I just forgot to put it out. I'm going to actually break up my video for YouTube into three separate days for the national championship. And then I have the trail series. But, uh, you know, I went down with no pre-fishing. First day was okay. I lost, you know, uh, fish at the boat because I didn't net it. No, Actually, that day I didn't net at all. And mm -hmm. uh, except after I lost that fish. But, you know, I lost one, so I only had four on the board. Second day I had five. And then the last day I only had two, I think, on the board because, the, you know, with the conditions, we had 25-mile-per-hour winds on day one with higher gusts. Second day it sustained around 15. And then the last day it finally started – to subside a bit and then when the trail events came it was beautiful um mm -hmm. you know so you'll you'll see all that information uh on my video and every, how that cool. all turned out uh but it was good it was a good event uh i think uh you know why it won the national and uh mm -hmm. 
And then Russ uh, took third place. I think Mike Elsie took second place yeah. for the national championship. And then the trail series came about. So the funny story is, you know, Russ was down there. Uh, he wasn't even going to come because they had the flu. I guess he talked to Chad and Chad had kind of convinced him to come. He just kind of showed up, you know, the board check, like, like at the end of the board check, kind of did his thing and kind of took off and just trying to recoup. And he went out. He did good for the national championship. He, he, like I said, he got third place. And then – trail one on Saturday, he came out and won it. And the funny story behind that is the wind was still kind of higher when you're out in the main body of water. So he was on Lake Wheeler. And mm. I looked at the leaderboard. I only looked every now and then. And mm. I said, wow, even Russ is having a hard time today. He only has two fish. And that was around like 1130. Like, mm -hmm. Well, it makes, it makes me feel a little better. So uh, <laughs> I looked at the end of the day and Russ wins trail one. And he moved from Wheeler at 1130. So it's leaving you only three hours left. It took him right. an hour to, to move, reset up. So he had two hours on Lake Gunnersville. And with two hours left in Lake Gunnersville, he wins the trail one. Wow. So, so for you to move, be sick, and win the event in two hours is amazing. You know, he didn't pre-fish either. You know, he's been there before. He, he has his, you know, his uh, his marks on his graph and everything. But, right. you know, he did no pre-fishing. But for him to, you know, do third place in the national Win the trail event on day one, and he probably would have won the trail event on day two, but he finally gave out and had to go home. You know, Saturday mm -hmm. night, he called Chad around 10 30 and says, I, I just can't do it anymore. And he went home, he's done. Yeah, he's yeah, probably so still sleeping right now. He's probably sleeping. Probably. <laughs> he's a beast. Yeah. And Russ is, I think, I've always said it, he's like the number one ranked. If in my head, I've got if, if there was like a rankings, he would be number one, no doubt about it. Yeah, um, you know. Fish is a lot more. It, it, they all, you guys all fish a lot more than I do. Really, I know it seems like I fish a lot more than I do, probably. But, but man, if I could fish more, I, don't, I still think Russ is just he just understands it so well, man. He's so good at it. He's the best, in my opinion. I mean, like Joe's saying here, dude's a beast. Um, he's awesome, man. A good and a good dude too. Very, very smart, knowledgeable, and he's gonna be at Sholey Palooza. He's teaming yeah. up actually with Steve Baker, who just uh, on here. For on the team division, but Russ is also going to fish a couple of these kayak of interest series events. So don't be threatened by that. Like we've said before in these things, go use it to your advantage, hang out with Russ at the opening ceremonies at the, the restaurants, the breweries, all the places we're going to be at the after party at the festival. He will tell you and talk to anybody like any, like anybody like, like, you know, in this sport, if you just want to go hang out, meet them and say, Hey, this is my name. I've been following you. Big fan. He'll talk to you about whatever you want to talk to him about, give you tips, pointers. He's he's open. He's going to be teaching one of the ACA classes with Dustin and Jeff Little. So, again, sign up for that and glean some serious information being with him all day, and uh, it'll be worth it for sure. So, man, rough event sounds like uh, for a lot of people out there, though, aside from the those, those winners, although a lot of guys did. You know, there were several that really cracked him pretty oh, good, yeah. uh, which I it think always, I... always happens, but. I ended up 72. So my wife says, well, you ended up better than half the field. And one of the judges said the same thing to me as well, you know, with a via the text. And I says, yeah, but I could have, if I didn't lose that fish on day one and I did better on day three, I could have been in the top 20. I mean, mm -hmm. Chad was paying out to, um, you know, 15th place. So I had a good yeah, shot at it. I just, you know, just lost it. You're you right know, there, and, dude. Right there. So I, I'll take it. I got my, you know, my 100 board and, you know, as I call it, the yeah. participation trophy, but at least I made the top hundred and, you know, and everything else. And then the trail ended up 20 trail two, trail one. It was horrible. Trail two ended up, I think 24th, maybe Okay. out of like 45 or 46. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I just kind of yeah. ran mid, mid level this time around, but the national championship for 25 Chad already has that out. Uh, I'm already qualified for it right now with just making the top 100. I'll probably go back to it if I have time. It's going to be tight. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he's guaranteeing – I don't want to take his thunder away yet because I don't think he's made the announcement. But he's guaranteeing, I think, 50 at the 25 payout. And he's going to break it up differently and spread that wealth more down the board. I'll let him talk about that. And he is planning on bringing back a $100,000 guarantee payout in 26 for the national championship. That'd so, once again, once again, breaking it out and spreading, you know, spreading the wealth among all of us who work so hard at it. So, it's just not like, you know, everybody gets the top three, get all the money. He's really going to bring that down on the board, which is going to be good for a lot of people to really, you know, want to come out and do that. Uh, good, man. Good. Well, you know, so that, he did, we want to see lot. that. We want to see that get, get back. You know, there were times it was six, seven, 700 people. And that's why I, I won yeah. $23,000 for second place. So, we'd love to see it continue to grow. Um, and we all are working really good together behind the scenes, you know, Chad and, AJ and 
Steve Owens and just trying to coordinate all these schedules. It's tough. And there will be a little overlap. Like we talked about with John and Yak Gadget and Yak Attack, there will always be a weekend or two here or there where some of these big events are going to overlap. And typically when that happens, we try to make them on different parts of the country. But it's just giving anglers more opportunities. And it's really not, you know, not a bad thing. It's it's okay. We will we'll make it if, if there's a little overlap here and there. And uh, it's better for everybody. So the what I want to mention was the difference. What's you're probably excited about Shirley Palooza because you get to fish in the afternoon, which isn't rough, just three to seven on that first Friday mm -hmm. afternoon, like all the kayak adventure series events, you, all the anglers, you guys will fish from three to seven on Friday. Uh, hopefully you'll be attending those seminars earlier that day uh, on Friday, the Bass University brunch, the Bass U brunch. It's going to be pretty cool. You can go on the website for Shirley Palooza and sign up for it now. Um, limited number of people there, but you get breakfast and you get to learn from the best fisheries biologist about the shoal bass, Jeff Little, myself, there's a YouTuber panel. Gene Jensen's going to do a seminar on rigging at the very beginning. So lots of good intel to be had there. But, I mean, you got to be kind of excited about a five-fish tournament where it's three to seven, and then only one time you got to get up early on Saturday morning. Yeah. And that's it. That'll be a little easier for some of us. And this is, a, again, it's kind of, this is kind of a gateway tournament trail series entry level to a lot of anglers. Hopefully will expand and grow up if they, if they find more of that just super high – competitive, you know, elite level events or, or something they want to tackle too. This is a good starting point. And like I said, we'll have some big names at fishing for sure, but it, most of the big names will still be on that, the, 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 the elite of the elite, like talent It's definitely going to still be, you know, on that uh, Bassmaster series, the Hobies, the, the KBFs for sure. So uh, you got to be excited though about this format being a little bit different and a little bit more laid back. And, and just Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to give me, you know, I'm, I'm coming to be competitive, but I'm also coming to bring, you know, the have fun at doing this, you know, be with all you guys and actually have my family with me this time to be able to bring, you know, let them go do all the, you know, the stuff while I'm out in the water. And it's just, I think it's good. If you can bring your family with you, it always makes it a lot better because when you're away from your, you know, your, your, yeah. your kids and your wife, it's tough, you know, especially for a it week, is. but I was so busy this time and so tired that it wasn't as bad as normally. But if you ask my wife, I text her all the time. I miss you. I love you. You know, it, it was always tough yeah. being away from her for a long period of time, but she also helps me prep too as well. So when I'm by myself, I lost four pounds down there because I barely ate, yep. you know? So mm -hmm. just like, I'm just constantly going, she would have, you yeah. know, food ready for me and stuff, which always makes it nice. So it's going to make it a little bit of a nicer event. And then when I go back to, you know, uh, the Susky, I'm going to be able to see my mother, which I only get to see once every few years, you know, she'll be there and hopefully, uh, you know, she'll come down to the event and be able to, you know, watch, hopefully me and you know whoever else walk across the stage so yeah, yeah. You know, your whole you know the whole format with being on the stages and the old historical theaters really i think to me is making it fun for a lot of new people that want to do this mm -hmm. you know like you said yeah. to open them up to other you know other events yeah absolutely um you guys have a is there a question or anything we need to post here you guys have a question you guys watching anybody want to have something answer we can do it um otherwise i'll bring up one other if anyone needs to leave by the way if you, you know you guys are getting busy i know you got work schedules and stuff hop out okay. we're probably not gonna go yeah, much i'm gonna head out here in a minute yeah. Drew, but also wanted to just remind everyone that um the events are always um not always but they're paired up with other trails so the uh -huh. state kayak anglers because as we talk about the team right. event and the micro bag don't forget about the local That's trail true. too a great way to kind of That's double true. down double dip and for and they do not have their tourney x page I, I actually messaged them earlier or last week and said as soon as you guys get your tourney x page made where people can register for your event let me know because it's you know we're less than a month away so i'm sure the pete state guys are, are looking forward to getting registered for that event along with our event so as soon as they have that up and live it will well you know it'll go that registration button on the website will literally go to tourney x not no no longer just to their facebook group page which is where it goes now so coming soon but um yeah i mean that we, we pretty much have gone an hour we can certainly talk about something else um you know if we want to talk real quick there's a short thing i was going to mention but billy if you got to get going you run get back to work thanks for uh hanging out with us and i uh, appreciate you as always yeah definitely thanks guys see you later right, billy. See ya. uh this is a good comment actually jesse is saying that if people want to pre-fish wapapello uh you know, KAMO, which is uh, Kike Anglers, Missouri, I guess, um, has a tournament on April 27th. I'm, I'm not super familiar with the group, but I assume that's what it is. Jesse, you can back me up on that probably here in the comments. But uh, obviously, I'm familiar with Moyak and other ones, but it's hard to keep track of every state club. So forgive me. It's probably like some giant club, and I just don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, but Wapapello is on their schedule on April 27th, which is, a, which is cool. 
that she brought this up because the way our rules are, you can pre-fish four days within a two week window, four days. You get to pick which four. So um, if this obviously isn't, uh, this isn't a Georgia event, but let's say April 27th was a, a tournament in Georgia from a local club, then you could fish that event, even if it was two days and you'd still have two more days to fish pre-fish. So it lets you fish any events like that, but, uh, and then also fish the kayak adventure series. Also just something to note too, which we're going to have a rules, um, have Amanda Brandon on with the rules and she is confirming it's kayak anglers of Missouri. We're going to have Amanda Brandon on too, which, so someone did ask this question and I'll clarify this now. And this is, you know, no one has to watch these live streams. It's not ac the actual rules, but I'll just say it in case anyone is. The four four days of practice within a two week window. If you sign up for the tournament on Thursday at the opening ceremonies, like literally sign up then, it still applies to you. Just because you don't sign up until a day or two before the tournament begins, that still applies. So in other words, you cannot sign up for the tournament and legally sign up and fish this tournament if you've been fishing the whole seven days leading up to it, and then all of a sudden. You sign up and say, well, I wasn't registered yet, so technically I wasn't breaking the rule. That's like a way you're trying to get around that rule. So you you still can't fish the events if you're if you fish more than four days within a two-week window. So, But yeah, Wapapello, uh, I know that this spring, a couple 30-pound bags got caught out of Lake Wapapello. So they're in there, guys. I don't know, you know, in July if they'll be as easy to catch, but they're obviously in there. And with the technology being allowed and forward-facing sonar, uh, you know, somebody – Somebody may you know, go get one of John's uh, forward facing sonar brackets mounts and, and go out there and they're, they're there. Like, go find them. They're in that lake and they're big. And, and they're also in all the rivers. So that's going to be a fun event. But uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but the only thing I was going to mention, and I want to get your opinion on it, is uh, we're going to, I'm about to sign up. I've already signed up. I'm about to do my first fish tip on fishtips.com. And that was a controversial platform when it started. It probably still is. But to some degree, but basically what it is is fishtips.com is simply like you can go on there and excuse me, buy a, and I can even pull it up on my uh, browser here, but have you guys heard of that website? Yeah. I think yeah. Gene's on there. Gene started it. It was on there too, I think. Yeah. I met those guys had a booth right next to me at ICAST. So I got to meet them and yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And I, I like Austin and what he stands for, what he says, and he, he kind of is making, <clears throat> he makes a lot of sense. And that's in the fact that, you know, I don't, again, I don't have my, I don't have my, uh, mine up yet, but what it is is you can just go on there and a lot of maybe guides are on here or pro anglers are on here and they, they certify and verify everybody. So this guy's got a picture of uh, someone he guided on a big fish and they just, they'll just give you, if you don't want to spend the $500 or $700 or whatever it is that guys charge these days for a whole day, you can just go in here and buy, if you got all the equipment to do it yourself and you, maybe you don't have the time to watch every YouTube video and you're not as into this stuff as, uh, you know, we might be right. You can go on there and just and buy a, a tip, you know, and it'll help you dial it in right away. And so I think that was a little bit controversial. To some people, cause like, man, this is like, so you could just give by waypoints and coordinates and stuff like that. And it's like what Austin says, and it makes sense is, is until the tournament trails change the rules and they probably never will. It, using a guide is legal for up to a certain point in all these tournaments, using a guide is legal but that's no different than knowing a best friend who happens to live on Lake Chickamauga. Right. And, and, or, I mean, I've got elite series pros. I mean, look, Miles yeah. Berghoff is on chick. I could call him up and like, tell me what they're, what they're doing. That's totally legal up to a certain point. Right. Yeah. So a guide, when they take you out, you're going to pay them for the information, how to catch a fish in that lake. And you're going to ask them about, you know, what about three weeks from now when my tournament is? And you know, if they, if they, you know, waypoint, you could certainly just, get them from you're out there on the water with them or whatever those all those transactions happen in our sport already and so the only thing fish tips is saying is let's let the anglers as we all know john we've talked about this earlier with how tough the industry is we're in it for because we're passionate about it not really because no one's getting rich right so right. if the anglers can have another way to get a source of revenue and let them just put their tips and their information out there and they could limit it so like i'm when i get on there i'll tell you what i'm doing I'm not a fan of, you guys know my philosophy. I want to teach. I'm a teach. I want to teach people how to fish, not just say, go here. I want to tell them why I'm telling them to go there. You know what I mean? And then they don't need me anymore at one point. And maybe that's stupid from a business model, but that's not my entire business. is isn't teaching fishing, right? But I just want to help people catch more fish. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on there and I'm going to have, um, I'm going to limit it to one person because you can limit it. You can make the price. I think Ishman Rose got a 30 minute phone call for a thousand bucks. So if someone wants to pay Ish a thousand dollars for a thirty-minute phone call, then 
go for it. But I'm I don't know what my price is going to be, but I'm going to go on there and put um, tournament consultation, and I will take one person from any tournament out there. There'll be certain ones that I, lakes and certain places that I may not allow. But like basically, if you're going to a tournament and I'm not in that tournament, you know, I'll consult with you and and tell you what. I would do, here's what I would do in strategy for my style. You know, I can't tell you where to go live scope and how to do all that and where the offshore stuff's going to be. But for my strategy and my style, I can teach you guys like tournament consultation and you can kind of, I can work with you and have a couple different phone calls, you know, up to the point where you no longer can get information, obviously, but about, you know, what you're thinking and what we're seeing with the river gauges and the weather and a water temp and the stuff like that. And just kind of teach you guys no different than the seminars I do, right? The virtual seminars, I'm, which I'm still going to do those virtual seminars, but this is different because here's what's cool about it. It gets me to get to know somebody on a one-on-one -on -one personal level, which is what I love. I'd rather not put all my juice out there on YouTube for the entire world to know. And now does anyone have an advantage? If you've given it to everybody, now no one has the advantage because it's just free given to everybody. And you could probably find a lot of the stuff I'm going to teach and consult you on out there somewhere on the in the internet net somewhere maybe there, but not all that one concise place on a quick virtual just like we are now. Let, let's break down this lake. Let's figure out. Let me help you just figure out where maybe to try to start pre fishing and the strategy for the overall tournament. And once you start to learn and develop the strategy and the plan that I've been able to put put you know. Uh, together and, and it's worked well for me. I think you'll 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 pick it up yourself and start to be able to take it on your own, and you won't need me anymore. So I'm gonna do it for one event. I'm not gonna do it for two or three people in the same tournament because I'm not gonna give the same right. information to multiple people. Mm -hmm. But it, it allows it's another little revenue stream that my information and my knowledge, like you would never go call up a lawyer and say, "Tell me what I should do about this legal situation." He's gonna say, "Well, sure. Mm -hmm. Here's my fee. You know what I mean? Like, here's my right. like this information cost me, yeah, like right. hundreds of thousands of dollars of time yeah. and money and yeah. being on the water to learn this. It's not it, it, like with your job, whatever you know, John. Like, you know, someone calls you up or Ryan with what you do, like, and wants you to help them for an hour. It, it's not like, of course, you'd expect to get paid what you get paid, right? So it's no different yeah. than that. It's just I want to help people and get to know them on a personal level so I can cheer them on." root them on and know them personally and as opposed to just giving information out to everybody so the whole world's mm -hmm. got it and then yeah you can monetize that in a different way where you get more views and then and clicks and youtube will pay you but no i don't want to i don't have time for that i'm not a youtuber i don't have time to post stuff constantly to get into the algorithm to be like up high right. high and give away right. so i i got the kids and the family like you guys are saying and so um that's that's just how i would want to do it and then i get to pull for that person you know one-on-one -on -one and or those several people that i i consult and um you know It'll be interesting to see if anyone wants to buy those tips or not, but um, yeah, it'll be fun. I think really, I think an hour, if he did like an hour phone call with you and they're going into a serious tournament, you know, when they're allowed to do yeah. it and talk to you about this, I think, you know, 250 is a good number, you yeah. know, I think in my opinion, I don't know if you're looking to go higher, but I think 250 is a good number if they're really serious about winning the competition. Yeah. You know? It's a lot. And it may be, maybe it's adjusted for local club events or, yeah. you know what I mean? Or, or na national events or whatever. I mean, but basically I'll, what I would do is do a live stream just like this and click share my screen. Like I'll go right now and I, I would go, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up right now. I'll pull up, uh, like I talked about far wide and we'll wrap this up here in like, you know, five, 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll go to far wide right now and I'll pull up what I was going to show you guys. So here's, here's one way I use far wide. I don't know what this lake is. I just ran randomly went to a lake. Um, it's uh, is it Salt Creek is Lake Monroe. This is Lake Monroe in Indiana. And, you know, what I use far wide for a lot is obviously there's there's uh, the GIS data, which can help you. Um, oh, hang on. Public land. Hang on. They changed the way it works, whatever. But there's somewhere on here is a GIS data. Uh, here it is. Sorry, I just hit the wrong thing. So I can see what's public land, what's private land, stuff like that in order to access, you know, pre-fishing, maybe um, some different places that, you know, I can just find. It's just good for to know, forget tournaments. It's just good to have that GIS data. You can click and see if this is like, you know, this is some, that's some trust from somebody. This is the United States of America land here, all that in green there. So you could certainly find a road and go over there. But, but let me remove that and I'll show you a cool thing about far wide. This is, if I click on this creek, it'll tell me. It's North Fork Salt Creek, and this is 42.7 miles. And my rule of thumb is 20 miles, and if, and if, if you click on it, it's 20 miles of, of, 
of Creek, it's usually floatable for at least that last like five miles. You know what I mean? Five or maybe 10, but usually five miles. And obviously you've got a lot of tributaries you can click on. See, that's seven miles right there. So you need to add up, kind of start adding all that up. And obviously I don't need to add this up because, because this is 42. I already know this, this whole thing right here, you can see it highlights. It's, it's called North Fork Salt Creek. I have no clue if there's fish in this thing, but basically from the headwaters of it down, it's, it's 42 and there's probably some pretty good sized tributaries that flow into it like this one here that are also, well, sometimes it'll cut off like that. It'll cut off when there's little different branches of creeks. So you got to zoom in, click on that one. So that's 3.3 and I could add it to this one here, which is another four miles. So you're looking at, you know, seven or eight miles of, and that's not counting other, other little tri tributaries and drainages that come into it. So basically I like to add stuff up and you can go to, there's another Creek down here. It's, you know, let's find out what this one is. This one's 22.3 miles. This is called middle fork salt. So that one right there. And there's another one down here. That's uh another 21.6 miles, the South fork salt Creek. So there's probably fish in South fork. There's fish in this one here. And that just kind of helps you get gauge. And when you zoom out, you can really start to see the topographic map there. Like the, I'm sorry, not topographic, the uh, terrain map, the, where the drainages all go. Like this is the, the ridge of a mountain right here. So you can kind of get this, uh, an idea of the actual size of the drainage of that entire Creek. You see what I'm saying? You kind of start, the more and more you do it, the more you kind of realize, you know, how much water is going go in there. You can combine that with Google satellite imagery to see if there's deep water in there and holes and stuff like that. And, you know, just kind of find fishable water in the small creeks and rivers and tributaries that I like to fish uh, or explore. So anyway, far wide's a pretty cool app, but I'll go and do stuff like that and explain, go on Google earth pro and use the satellite imagery and walk, use the USGS river gauges and, and the weather and the Omnia app with we talked about and teach somebody how to kind of learn and dissect the fishery quicker. It's all about being efficient in a tournament. So mm -hmm. I'll be, I'll be offering those. And yeah, I mean, I don't know, 250. Uh, I mean, I was, we'll see. It probably might go a little bit less than that. Even we'll see just to get some people started and get them going and see how, if they feel it's worth it and whatnot. So be on the lookout for that. And they are also sponsoring the kayak adventure series. So I uh, appreciate those guys at fishtips.com. Uh, but uh, what do you guys think about that? Any other comments on fish tips or the, the consulting, I, the one-on-one -on -one consulting? Yeah. Well, I, I want to say this. Just because I've seen it in person, Drew, I've seen him do his seminars three or four times working these shows. Yeah, you guys want to take advantage of this mm -hmm. because it's like getting a master's class in fishing. Like, just to see, like, I've I've seen a lot of seminars because I work these shows a lot, and right. to see him come up is completely different because he's laying it all out. He's giving you he's giving you everything how he dissects uh, an area how he looks at you know the water temperature how he looks at the 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 flow where the oxygen's coming from the tributaries yeah. all these things he's given it, it's like a science class that you're taking when you're yeah. listening to him and i and i'll be honest too like i've i've seen some people when they walk away from the seminar and i'll kind of look at them i was like i'm like it's a lot to take in because it's so yeah. much information being given to you and so um, taking advantage of fish tips from someone like Drew, who who's proven um, it, it's, it's an awesome thing. And, and it's something that I may even take advantage of myself. It's, cause <laughs> it's where, I mean, I know it'll be worth it, man. I don't share a lot of the juice out there. I don't, man. But when those seminars happen, John, like as you've seen, I'm getting paid to be there. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, I'm giving you putting on the best information, the best show yeah. and entertaining. I, I, yeah. I, I, I use video and I'll bring in video illustr illustrations as well to show you oh, yeah. here's what i mean about this type of paddle stroke or this certain cast and this certain piece of structure how where's the, sun? It? The, yeah, where's the location the sun? of the sun i mean i oh. i learned so much about that from you uh and 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 you know what what side of the river are you on when the sun is at a certain position i mean all these right. things matter it does it's so cool to get that kind of like point to point knowledge when you're developing mm -hmm. a strategy to work a tournament so it, yeah I, I think this is a great it's kind of a natural fit for you too, I think. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. No, I, I love it, man. I do. The classes are fun. We're going to do the classes again. I'll si set them up. They're usually like a hundred bucks. And so they're a lot less expensive because 10 people join it at one time, like minimum, yeah. uh, maximum of 10, I think we'll do minimum of five. So when that That's you get them to heal at one time, it's kind of cool. Cause now you kind of have, maybe somebody's got a question you didn't have. 
and you all kind of learn and bounce ideas back and forth together with me. And then at the end of the day, it's, it's no different than your business. Uh, you know, John, that you just want the anglers to have options and have a good experience on the water, more, more comfortable, more efficient, whatever. So they're better. They have a better time in the water and catch more fish. And I just want to see people having a good time in the water and catch more fish, but it just doesn't, doesn't feel right. If it's, if I just put it out there publicly to the world, it's like, then it's, right. everyone's got the same information and in a competitive setting, it just, I don't know. It just yeah. doesn't like, I well, spent so much time learning that stuff. You know, it's like, you can't just yeah. give it away. If, for you free. To, if, you, if you go to college, it costs money. If, if you go, if you go to trade school, it costs money. If you go to yeah. any kind of, any kind of class or any kind of, um, for your profession, it's going to cost money. So to me, right? Uh, I, I mean, if you get in on the ten person class at a hundred dollars a pop, I mean that's a deal. I mean that's that's a huge yeah. deal. Oh yeah, something that some some different strategies and some habits that you can develop will that will help you put you into money uh, in the long run in tournament fishing. It's gonna it'll pay it's mm. it'll pay for itself. But even if it doesn't, even if it just helps you enjoy the water more. You're, you're getting your money's worth. Um, and that's right. kind of the way, that's the way I've kind of looked at it is the products that we put out, are we giving people their money's worth? If, if that answer is always yes, then then it's a successful relationship. It's the same way with you. I agree. And, and, and seeing these seminars in person, I can I can attest, it, it's valuable information that, that you'd be getting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, and man. The best thing about, and the best things about seminars too, like you said, uh, you know, it's a lot of information you're taking in record it, you know, record it with your phone, yeah. record it with your GoPro, and then you can yep. go back and just listen to it again. If you missed what Drew said or whatever. I, and, and I record it. I'll record it by the way. And I'll send you a link afterwards. I send the, the people yeah. that do my classes a link because because StreamYard, the platform we're using, it allows us to record this. Well, it's recording it now, but then it also afterwards gives you a link to, it just keeps it like YouTube. So I'll, I send you a yeah. private link and you guys go back and watch it and then yeah. have it. Cause it is hard to remember how, if I teach you how to move, you know, waypoints from, google earth pro onto your phone or whatever so you can have them out there or you know or your tablet if you bring a tablet out little yeah. things like that that i use it when i'm not using a fish finder you know which is pretty much always but <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway so uh so andrew we'll, we'll, we'll end on this question here um andrew is saying um drew have you ever used the deep dive app i've never used deep dive but it's very similar it does all basically the exact same stuff the omnia app does so that that's you know, and Omni is a partner of ours and, and I've got a relationship with them, but I've never, I know Johnny um, at the deep dive app and it's a great app. It looks really cool, but yeah, I mean, you really don't need both those apps because they do the same thing. You just need one or the other. I think they're pretty darn similar. Um, and then also the far wide app has a little bit different functions than those. So that's why I use those two apps. Obviously Google maps, I mean, critical, but that's like goes without saying, I think. Um, but in on for the lake anglers, you're using, and, and river anglers too. You're using your mapping on your units. You know what I mean as well in your navionics and all that. So I just don't need it as much for this shallow water, backwater stuff that I love to fish. Um, but yeah, I mean that any other last minute things, qu comments, questions from anyone before we wrap this one up. I do want to say, Jessica, I saw your comment there. No problem showing you the trailer. Uh, and oh, yeah. everybody else, everybody else get signed up. You know, for this yeah. event, it's going to be fun. You know, just, just sign up for whatever ones you can sign up for. And his points are different. It's based on the entries you catch now where you place. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the points are definitely different. Like the AOI yeah. points. The AOI points are, yep. it's not based on where you place at all. It's based on the entries you catch, which is true. It's a good, unique thing about the AOI format. I mean, yeah. you're going to get points based on how many inches you catch and, and what that percentage is compared to the, to the winning angler, which winning angler, whether he's at 88 inches or 108 inches that's that equals 100 percent for that tournament he gets he or she gets 100 points but yeah. everyone else whatever you catch that's a percentage you know divided 100 by that your number or whatever or maybe it's the other way around so you get those points guys so you're going to get exactly what you deserve what you what you caught what you earned based on how how close you got to that 100 percent so, so you say that so you say there's a chance there's a chance, man. There's a chance. There's a chance. I mean, a lot of people could tie and get tons of the same AOI points. A lot of these events, um, because of that, you know, which is fine, but they're yeah. never going to tie like throughout the whole season. But at one event, it just makes sense. If you guys all had, you know, 99, three people had 99. Well, three people get 99 AOI points. If the lead, if the winner had a hundred inches, you see what I'm saying? The, the winner would get a hundred. So it is cool. It is cool to see how, you know, 
because it's not placing 15th out of 250 is not the same as placing 15th out of 50. You know what I mean? So why would they get the same AOI points? It's not the same. It's much harder to get 15 out of 250. But in this format, that's what you're trying to say is your AOI points. You just literally get what you earn, what you should based on that. No matter how many people are in it, 50, 500, you're, it still works. The math still works and it's, it's very equal and it's pretty cool. So it's just one of the unique yeah. things we're trying to implement at the kayak adventure series. So, uh, so there we go. Rob, Rob Woods and custom saw milling saying he'd be interested in some lessons for sure. So, I yep. mean, between the ACA classes we have on Sundays, which I'll do some of those at some of the events as well, between the virtual lessons I'm doing on fish tips, uh, the ones I'm doing there, the consultation one-on-one, man, it's, it's a no brainer. We're, we're, we're going to get people better. And, and the, I think right now in kayak fishing, we got to, we're not the, the Bassmaster opens. We're not the elite series. We don't have a floor that's, that, you know, there's a lot of good anglers in those tournaments that that's like super elite you know kayak fishing when you even the, the bass master and that you you've got a lot of good anglers they're all there for a reason but they're but it's not as deep with the talent yet as i think the bass boat world is you know what i mean and we'll we'll get there the more we continue to teach and educate and help people learn and it's going to get tougher and tougher that's kind of the evolution of all sports you know it's golf is more stacked than it's ever been because yeah it's hard to be a tiger woods when tiger woods influenced all the ones now who come up and now they've all been influenced and inspired and use his worth at the ethic. So they're all like pretty darn close to get. It's hard to have another Tiger Woods. The older and older a sport gets, you know. So it's it's we're gonna keep getting there and hopefully we can help. Well, and and I don't think it has to be on the same level per se. Right. I think that's one of the reasons why I love kayak fishing is it's a more right. personal. It's a more personal style of fishing. So mm -hmm. I, that's what I love about this kayak adventure series. That's why I'm excited to be a, uh, to have Yak Gadget associated with it. Because to me, the the, the open style format, the all all of the all of the original rules that pertain to kayak fishing, uh, right. it's really styled for true pure kayak fishing. That's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. you know, Drew, you and I talked in Indianapolis a lot about it. Yeah. It's one of the things about it that I absolutely love and, and just was super excited to be a part of because mm -hmm. I believe that that's the way yeah. that this the way that this series is being set up is the exact same all the same principles that got me into this sport that has kept me into this sport. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think personally, like you said, you're you're having you're you're gonna have the, you know all ships rise with the tide, right? Yeah. But you're going to have people get better and you're going to have a better style of fishing. But I think the coolest thing about this is you're people are going to get to fish the way, the exact way they want to fish. They're not going to have to change their style. If there's right. if you want to put in, if you want to put in and walk through some woods to get to a certain spot, right. Yeah. You're going to be able to do that. If, mm -hmm. if, you know, if you're, if you're, if you want to put in at a boat ramp, you're going to be able to do that too. Yeah, so use you, a motor, electronics, all that. Yeah, or or yeah. strip it down, or strip it down yeah. and go out on an inflatable or anything like that. So, so that's what I love about this: is it more open style? It, you can totally tailor it to your style of fishing, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the reasons why. And and that's the way Yak Gadget is. You, you can tailor your game however you want to tailor your game with our products, and you can do it really quick. So I, I feel like the mindsets of Yak Gadget and the mindsets of Kayak Adventure Series oh, are yeah. pretty much in line, which is why I'll be a part of it. Yeah, and we're going to give away some Yak Gadget stuff. The first 100 anglers that register in that $100 gift bag, you're going to get a really cool Yak Gadget product. So definitely want to be in that first 100. We'll see you guys um, at those events. I look forward to it. And I'll close with a shout-out to Turtle Box, who just sent us some uh, – I guess I could, could unwrap it here – some some turtle boxes to use if you've never seen these they're a sponsor we never really highlighted because they just got it basically these are waterproof little speakers and i think they have a new small version that's coming out that uh actually can plug up as a sound system to it like a, a microphone so we can use this at so like ryan over there in uh, tawanda pennsylvania for that event there's no hmm. power or electricity over at the um the pavilion at river front park so yeah. east side river front park so well i'll plug this up we'll play some music on it and then when i need to do my announcements I'll plug up my uh, microphone to it and uh, we'll talk through the announcements and uh, question and answer session, whatever we got to do there at the, uh, at the, you know, opening ceremony. So it's, it's pretty cool. So thanks to turtle box for being a I great sponsor. Yeah. I they're sweet guys. Those. Well, somebody's <laughs> going to win, win some too. So can you link those up to have multiple ones? So if you need to have a little bit louder at that uh, park over there, I think you can, I think you can. Yeah. And, and they, oh, wow. yeah, 
go check them out. Turtlebox.com or Turtlebox Audio, I believe, dot com. But all right, guys, we will catch you guys later. And yes, Dustin Hoy, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Looking forward yep. to it, man. All right, guys, get signed up. See ya. See you later.